sure. Oh, well, I'm Magster or Maggie or Mags. Um, I am a content crea creator, predominantly on YouTube and Twitch. Mostly around phasmophobia content, educational phasmophobia content. Um, but I do dabble in other horror games. <laughs> I mean, just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just as simple as that. Phasmophobia, uh, as, as I, I told you about uh, you know, just before we started, is a game that I fell in love with about seven, eight months ago. But uh, how long have you been playing this incredible ghost hunting game? <laughs> well, I started playing whenever it came out. Okay. Um, I saw people streaming it on Twitch and was like, this looks amazing. Yeah. I want to play it. Um, but I did take like a. It was like a six plus month break because I got really burnt out. Mm. Um, and then I came back when they had added like nightmare and ghost abilities. So when I took a break, there were no ghost abilities. It was just evidence, bada bing, bada boom. Really? So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, phasmophobia has like really evolved over the years. I mean. It has. Yeah. More tremendously, than, yeah. More than, more than just like the trailer or your base camp or the AI, like. There are locations that are new and updated, and there are yeah ghost abilities which are are fun, and there's a hell of a lot more tools that you can use, and it it really is like it's a mixed bag every time that you load up, and you can customize the difficulty, which is like you could fine tune it and tweak it just a tiny bit, which is kind of rare when it comes to video games in general. Yeah, you can play Phasmo the way you want to play it. You're not yeah. like limited yeah. by a certain difficulty, which is awesome. So, were were you creating uh, content online and being a uh, a Twitch and YouTube uh, streamer before Phasmophobia? And if so, what were you playing it before? Yeah, I've been streaming since like 2016. Wow, a lot of different stuff. Yeah, I started with Call of Duty Black Ops Two and Three Zombies. That's where I started. Um, I've played things like Apex, Legends, Ark Survival Evolved, Dead by Daylight, and I've kind of found my home in Phasmophobia now. Dead by Daylight is like the closest thing to where you are now because <laughs> majority of them are either survival games or first person shooters. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, survival games are kind of what I prefer to play like off stream kind of like my cozy game. Right. But I definitely think the horror genre is much more entertaining. A lot more content to be made out of it. Entertaining for you it. or for your community? <laughs> I'd say both. I'd say both. <laughs> <laughs> so like you've been at this since 2016. And uh, when did you start noticing that you're, you're, you were actually growing a community that you had consistent people in your you know, stream chat or supporting you in the comments? I'd say probably like just a year or two ago. Like it's definitely been a slow grind. Um, is when I started pumping out like educational fans with phobia videos that people were like, okay, you know what you're talking about. You helped me quite a bit. I've learned so much from you. I'm going to stick around, hang out. And yeah. <laughs> so do you remember your first milestone that you hit? Mm, probably I posted like a video on TikTok and it blew up and it was just like a simple video of me looping a ghost. And that's kind of when people started like flooding in and finding my Twitch and finding the YouTube. Was, um, it, was it a Diogen? No, it was, I think it was like a demon. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, I, I looped it like the whole time at the Ridgeview dining room table. Right. And I don't think I had a smudge either. And so people were like, oh my God. That just had my heart racing the whole time. I thought you were gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. I've been playing enough of the game, and you, you mentioned looping a ghost. Like I automatically know that kitchen. You know. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. I was like, I hope when I'm saying that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I figured I, you did. You said seven months. I yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm exactly. talking about. You, you hit your first milestone by uh, getting recognition on social media, TikTok, and then mm -hmm. uh, growing the community further. Is is the do you, like do you have like a direct line with the people behind Phasmophobia because your prestige rating is something I didn't even know was possible. <laughs> what what is your current prestige rating? Well, I'm like the max prestige, which is twenty, um, and then like level three or four hundred. Like um, that is a that is amazing, and they just did like a, an entire uh, leveling reboot. Like everyone started at nil 
not too long ago. I did a little bit of grinding. <laughs> I did a little bit of grinding. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I do. You asked if I knew like the devs. Is yes. that kind of? What, what? Yeah. I mean, I'm like a Kinetic Games partner. Oh wow. Um. So like, I have direct contact with them. Not that they've like helped me level or anything. I just like get news earlier than other people. You just get constant yeah, emails every time you load into a server. This one's this one's a revenant. This one's a Diogen. Uh, it's oh the twins. <laughs> Yo, sometimes I get lucky and I'll be like, I'll go against the Banshee. I'll be like, okay, scream for me on the Paramark in three, two, one, and it happens. I'm like, oh, there's that streamer look right there. <laughs> Dev's hooking me up. <laughs> it, it is like, there, there, the one thing is for sure, and it's one of the reasons why like, I wanted to reach out and talk to you, is that you, you have this game down pat. You, you rightfully have earned like, the maxed prestige, prestige in leveling up because you know the ins and outs of this game. There was a, uh, I think it was a, a grinding level stream that I saw you do. You were at a campground. Uh, you had it on uh, foggy weather, and you went in with like the bare minimum of equipment. And nine times out of ten, you were able to identify the ghost, which was on the most insane difficulty. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm I'm watching the stream, both just in utter confusion and and in like amazement because you're like, oh, you're it it's it's not walking too fast, it's doing this. Oh, you see how <laughs> how often it's blinking? That means it's this, and like. I'm sitting here going like I, I can't write notes fast enough. What the hell is this? <laughs> like, it takes a lot of dedication to do what you do, and you like have very clearly earned the respect of the, uh, the your community as well as the designers of Phasmophobia. But what what brought you to that point? Um, I mean, whenever I came back to Phasmo, because like I said, I took a long break. Right. There was all these ghost abilities. I was like, I was as overwhelmed as you're talking about. I'm like sitting there trying to take notes. I was like watching Insim, you know, yeah, the King of Phasmo. I like trying to take notes, but I was like, how would you notice that? And I just wanted to figure it out. Like I, I wanted to be able to go into a game, you know, see the ghost and be like, okay, it's not this, it's not this, but it could be this. And it's almost like a detective kind of like puzzle game at that point mm. when you're like playing without evidence and just trying to notice his behaviors that I just like I wanted to get better I wanted to be able to identify these ghosts mm. without evidence and also you probably come with this frustration sometimes when you're playing with evidence you just get ghosts that don't give you evidence yeah and I was like okay I'm done I'm done with evidence I'm just gonna you know do all these tests yeah and that's what you know really strengthened my love for Phasmo yeah I, I know you and I are just geeking out. Anyone who is just unaware of Phasmophobia. Oh, no, no, it's my fault. Like, I'm the one leading this. So uh, <laughs> I, I just, like, I, I acknowledge the fact that, like, if, if you know, you, the viewer or listener, are, have not played the game, like, we're probably just speaking a completely different language right now. But I, I will say, like, more often than not, the one thing that that bites me, like, comes up and just just kicks my ass is when I think I have something set I think I know what it is and I go back to the truck and I confirm like it's I've circled this and it's a damn mimic oh the it's, mimic yeah so it's 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 those tests and those in those uh those those um abilities that you have paid attention to which can help define whether or not it is a mimic right I mean if it makes you feel any better I still sometimes get mimic so but <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, there's definitely some things you can do yeah. not get mimic. So you've gotten to a point where you've actually like, yes, you have an incredible community and uh, you, you've, you are in contact with developers of the game, which I'm a little jealous. Uh, because <laughs> it's a great game and rightfully so. Uh, but you've also mentioned too that uh, you've, you've actually coached people into getting better at, at identifying uh, the certain quirks of phasmophobia. Well, there's um, I don't know if you're familiar with the the gold trophy challenge. It's like the hardest challenge in yeah. phasmophobia, um, which if you do it, you get like a really nice gold 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 skull trophy. Right. Um, so I was for a while I was helping people do that. I was coaching them. We would just sit in a Discord call. They'd stream the game, and I'd walk them through it. Hmm. Um, I've done a few of those, which is fun. Yeah, and and. Again, to, just to make reference, uh, so there are three different levels of difficulty uh, that you can achieve. You have to run, be running solo, and the difficulty has to be up to a certain point. And if you 
there's a bronze skull, a silver skull, and a gold skull. And it, it, it defaults, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you go for the gold skull immediately, you automatically get the bronze and the silver on top of that. Yes. Yeah. So it, it would make sense like to for anyone who's looking for a challenge to go for the gold, absolutely, if you think you can do it, and just be able to knock out all three of those trophies at the same time. 100%, yeah. It's the easiest way. So, but I mean, easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, easy being uh, the optimum word here. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, so, with your connection of uh, of of your the developers of the game, like, do you do you get feedback, or can you provide feedback, or anything like that? Like, what is the relationship there? I think I could. Um, I could point out, you know, like bugs. Um, I. I I'm just like, I don't know if it's shy is the right word. I just don't want to go in there and be like, yo, hey, this is a problem. Right. This year, um, I definitely have some suggestions for the game. But, um, I, I mean, I don't. I don't. I probably could <laughs> make some recommendations. But they have so many plans for the game already. And it's a small dev company. They recently had like some fire damage to their office. And so they're kind of recuperating from that. I they heard have the about big that. console yeah. release. So they're like really overwhelmed, I think, which is another thing that stopping me from being like hey could you look at this maybe consider this yeah it, you you also are your own editor are you not like you put together your own videos yes yeah, yeah. so like uh, video production and like wh what is your background like <laughs> oh gosh because because uh, i can, I I can tell you background. right now like like i've i've been like I, I mentioned before like i've i've been a radio host for 20 years I've, been, I've actively been in media for 25 years so like for me to sit down at the computer and create a video and edit it and like that's just that's just what i do so it, was this where you imagined yourself being like 10 15 years ago no 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 like about in 2016 i was actually getting ready to go to law school like really? I, I ended up obviously I ended up falling in love with streaming and didn't do it, but right. um I had very little experience with media production, but YouTube is a fantastic place to learn anything. So if you ever want to get into something, um I'd say I learned a lot of it from, you know, YouTube and I guess self taught is probably the answer there. But yeah. no, I I I went to I have a bachelor's degree in political science and global studies. Oh wow! I didn't even really? Study? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's why I was paving the way for law school, but ended up not doing it. Why? Why law school? Like, um, it just it seemed like a challenge. It seemed like something I wanted to learn. I, I didn't really have like a passion as far as like a particular kind of law, but there's not not really a good reason why I think <laughs> I just wanted to try it. It's not the first time I've heard that. Like yeah, there, there's 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 people there's people that I know, uh, not not directly, but there's people that like I'm acquaintances with, and I've heard like you know because I ask questions, I've heard the story of like <laughs> oh like what do you like did you always want to do blah 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 blah? I was like no, actually I wanted to go into law, but uh, I just I didn't have a strong reason why, and so when this mm -hmm. came along, it like I glommed onto it, and I realized this is what my passion is. It's yeah it's interesting how that seems to be not common but it's again it's not something that is i've heard that is new to me it's it's i don't well, i think too like streaming the whole streaming world was kind of it didn't come out till like 2016 so i, I couldn't have even known that i wanted to get into it you know like the right. whole youtube content creation right so sometimes people don't know what they want to be until they grow up until after they've grown up you know <laughs> you <laughs> kind of fall into it <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a big if and when when they grow up <laughs> yeah <laughs> your community and let's talk i would like to talk about them like you have uh your regular followers but you also have uh, a group of uh other content creators that you work alongside uh who are they and uh how did those relationships come to be um, are there specific content creators you're talking about? Uh, there's a, or... there's, there was a group of them that I saw you uh, complete like the Banshee challenge where you all had to get like annihilated within a minute. I think that was during like a community game. Oh, okay. So you play um, with the, your community uh, often? Uh, once a month I do like a community day. 
um, where I play with them. Okay. I usually try to play solo because I like to have the experience with chat. You know, I want chat to feel like they have my full attention. So. Right. Usually play solo. I, I don't honestly play with that many other content creators. Usually people reach out and ask because um, I'm kind of, you know, an introvert, shyish person. So um, I usually do some solo stuff. Hmm. I understand you may see yourself as shy, but you on your <laughs> on your social media, uh, you actually share quite a bit as uh, you are well on your way on a fitness journey. Yes. Um, however, I have kind of been slacking recently, if I'm being honest. But um, definitely for a year or two there, yeah. I was really into going to the gym five, six days a week, mm -hmm. 10,000 steps a day, counting my calories. I loved it. Did you have a personal trainer? No, no. Oh, I mean, again. YouTube, YouTube. Again, <laughs> self-taught. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was, I'm trying to think how I got into it. I think it was just on YouTube and I, was, I got really into ultra marathon documentaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, I loved watching people challenge themselves. I was like, I didn't want to be an ultra marathon runner. I was mm. like, I just want to challenge myself to like start getting like 10,000 steps a day. And so I would do that. Mm. And then I started losing weight. I was like, ah, I kind of want to build some muscle. Like all these people on YouTube, they're swole, you know? <laughs> yeah. I want to get into that that realm. So I right. um, found a couple YouTube channels that were, I had a lot of good videos about weightlifting and how to figure it out. And Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, <laughs> I, I love on your Instagram uh, profile, it says uh, like uh, leg day something. What was it? Leg day enthusiast, I leg think. Leg day enthusiast. Like for me. for me, oh, it's best day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> leg day is like my favorite day and I have two uh, of them a week. So. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> but, you know, good on you for, uh, you know, just taking it upon yourself to challenge yourself physically and to like, you know, see where things lead it can be daunting and even if you've like slacked off for the for the past little while i mean it doesn't really matter uh in my opinion like the motivation and the the energy if you want it to be there it will be there and you will eventually just get back into a rhythm if that's where you want to be yeah work, working out something you can always get back into for sure yeah i agree are you counting calories though? Like, it, was it just were you like using a an app or because you said you didn't have a personal trainer? So I'm guessing you weren't working <laughs> alongside a nutritionist. Correct. Yeah, it was. Um, so like, I have a little scale. I would right. weigh weigh my food in grams. Right. Um, make sure I was getting a certain amount of protein, which I am a vegetarian as well. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, yeah. Amidst your research, um, yeah. so a lot of like plant based protein. Um, make sure I was getting enough protein, enough carbs. Um, had like a certain calorie goal, which was definitely also hard to figure out with how much calories you're burning in the gym and with your cardio. So I always had to like look at my energy levels and make sure it'd be like, am I too tired? Am I slacking off in the gym? Do I need a little bit more? <laughs> it's a lot of work. It, it is a lot of a lot work. Of work. <laughs> yeah. And and you learn from your mistakes. Mm, yeah. 100%. I, can I share a quick story for you? I'd love to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I said before we started that my, my girlfriend's a bodybuilder and she's training me to uh, compete in bodybuilding for the first time in my life. I'm, I'm 44 years old and it's actually uh, back in 2012, um, I was overweight. I was in an unhealthy relationship and I, I, was, I was just not active and I took it upon myself to to challenge myself to much, much like you is like, just, you know what, let's just get cardio up. Let's see if I can work up a sweat for like a half an hour a day. And I started doing that and I put myself to the goal to do it for consistently 100 days. And I quickly noticed that things were falling into place. I, I needed to have healthier food because I needed the, the energy and I'd get tired easier at night, so I'd get a better night's sleep, and just the domino started to fall. But eventually, it got to the point where like, I knew I needed something like protein powder or something. So I went to a supplement store that, in my hometown, no longer exists, and this might be one of the reasons why. <laughs> uh, oh. I, I said, uh, I went up to the counter, and I said, I'm looking for something to help me with my, with my fitness and my health and my workout. And the guy behind the counter pointed at something. Goes, try that. 
okay <laughs> like didn't even mm. didn't even ask me like what it was specifically i was after so i bought it I took it home and i started using it uh after every workout and i i should have known something was off but then again i was learning as uh the flavor of this supplement that i bought from this supplement store was fruit punch <laughs> and I would find myself getting extremely tired halfway through my workout, like no energy, n like nothing in the gas uh -huh. tank, right? And so I went to a different supplement store and I said, like, this is the problem. This is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. I, you know, what am I doing wrong here? And he goes, well, what's, what's the, what's the supplement that you bought? What's the protein powder that you bought? And I said, I, I don't know. It's, it's fruit punch. And the guy went, what? I said, it's fruit punch flavored and he goes that's not protein powder that's like vitamin supplements you've what's your protein intake i went i don't know <laughs> <laughs> turns out yeah i've been i was instead of having protein powder after every workout i was having the uh the bcaa's or like the equivalent of a bodybuilder's like gatorade after every workout no protein <laughs> I, was, oh, no. I, I was just running out of gas at the end of every workout or not even I was like halfway through and I'd just be flat dead oh no <laughs> so learning from your mistakes is is a big thing when it comes 100%. to 100% yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's not even your fault like you no. got told that's what you should drink like that's not fair yeah like like I said that, that supplement store that like, doesn't exist anymore at least it's not in my town so that that lack of customer care might have something to do with it no i'd say so <laughs> so yeah well i mean okay so you being a, a vegetarian like where do you find uh your protein intake oh uh, there's a couple of good brands like you can get the grocery store like morning star you know beyond burgers impossible burgers yeah. it's a little expensive which mm -hmm. is a little unfortunate but they have really good protein um, I wouldn't say like as good as like a chicken breast, but better than just like eating peanut butter and drinking protein shakes yeah. all the time. Uh, with with protein protein shakes, like I do know that there's companies out there that have specific vegan protein formulas. And actually, the the, the one supplement uh, company that I work with, or I shouldn't say work with, I I I am in communication with, but they don't sponsor me in any way. <laughs> Uh, they have this incredible uh, vegan line that actually, uh, you know, I, I was fooled by it at one point in time. I, I didn't know the difference. Mm. So, What's the brand? It's uh, Magnum. I don't think I've heard of that. Yeah. They're actually, okay, so I, I live in British Columbia, Canada. They're based in uh, the lower south end of British Columbia in Vancouver. And um, they, they ship I'm pretty sure to ship around North America, but uh, yeah, it's another reason why I work with them. But regardless, I was I was <laughs> fooled because like I didn't know that the supplement I was taking at the time, which was given to me by by my girlfriend, was vegan, and mm. it it tasted just the same as what I usually took. So you know, kudos to the companies, not just Magnum, but also other ones that like take it upon themselves to have that option for people like yourself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm vegetarian, so I still can have like the the normal protein powder, I guess. But it is cool to know that there's other options. Because like oh, so many of the vegan protein powders are awful. They taste like dirt. They taste yeah. like <laughs> I couldn't do it. No, this so. is true. And that's another thing that's come a long way over the years. <laughs> for yeah. sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I want to get into a, a couple of questions that were I, I found uh, through social media. Uh, directed to you and i thought they were kind of fun questions uh okay if that's all right for sure let's, let's hear them sure so uh <laughs> the first question comes from michael this is off of instagram and uh he asked if you could buy any one of the houses from phasmophobia which one would it have haunted or which one would you have haunted or not do i get to choose if it's haunted or is it just well, haunted or not, or not haunted? <laughs> <laughs> that's always i get asked that question a lot yeah. Let's see. Um, I, I want to say Willow Street. Willow, it's got, you know, the two bedroom, the one bath. So, no, one bath's fine for my family size. Yeah. I'd say Willow Street. Willow Street. Cozy. I don't care if it's haunted or not. Bring it on. 
unprofessional. Yeah. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> you wouldn't take one of the cabins? Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the cabin, the cabin mm. vibe. Yeah. They are kind of big too. They are. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Brandy asks, uh, what is the bane of your existence when it comes to the ghost? I'm guessing which one, which ghost do you hate to be approached by? Uh, it's an easy one. Um, so I play a lot of zero evidence, right? Without evidence. Right. And the two most difficult ghosts to figure out are the mayor or the Gary that just don't do their ability. Because their abilities are so nuanced and you have to see those to 100% be like, it's this ghost, it's this ghost. Otherwise, I'm just guessing. <laughs> so the, either of those two, if they don't do their ability, I'm just, I'm guessing and going. I'm out of there. <laughs> the mayor and the Yuri. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for them the next time I play, which is probably later on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> with evidence, they're fine. But when you play without evidence, it's yeah. annoying. But yeah. Uh, John asks, uh, what editing program software do you use? Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Oh. Yeah. Fellow Adobe, right on. Yeah, it's so cozy. It is. I love it. I mean, it, it's not exactly user friendly once you once you start into it, but it, once you figure out the tools and the effects and everything that it provides, like it is, it's versatile. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then you got all those nice hotkeys to make the editing faster. And it's just yeah. Absolutely. Love. Were you, Were you always using, using Adobe? No, I was using for a while like Wondershare, Filmora, or something. Okay. Um, but I don't know why I swapped. I just wanted to. I wanted to see what the hype was about behind Adobe because yeah. I was already using Photoshop, so I was like, why not? You know, gotcha. Dabble. <laughs> yeah, might as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I can tell you right now, like, and I know this uh, because I work in the industry. Like, Adobe is a, a television uh, broadcast standard. Like, the majority mm. majority okay. of the. Uh, TV stations in, in my industry in Canada use Adobe. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's a great program. It is, yeah. One more question here. I guess this one has to do with your fitness, but it is, uh, what is your most surprising achievement when it comes to lifting or pushing? This one comes from Garrett. Ooh. I don't really have any crazy PRs, to no. be honest. I mean, once I had, like, I was squatting like you know two 45 pound plates that felt pretty cool to me <laughs> absolutely um and my my bench press was bench press was always kind of weak i think i maybe got up to like um you know like 50 pounds on the bar which felt pretty cool to me well that's it's <laughs> so 50 yeah, it that's 50 pounds plus the bar right plus the bar right yeah. so it's not like wow. you're just lifting two fifty pound weights. There's the bar there, which can range anywhere from thirty or it's like twenty to forty five pounds. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's it's something to be proud of. It's still mm -hmm. right. Yeah, have to remind yourself when you're working out that anything's an accomplishment, even if somebody else is lifting way more than you. That's them. That's not you. No, absolutely. You no, know? any any growth in yourself is huge. Absolutely. My, my girlfriend likes to quote this and I, I know I'm going to get it wrong, but it's uh, comparison is the killer of joy. hundred percent. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah. It's true though. I mean, like, like I'm, I've been at this for, for years and there are guys in the gym that have probably been at it for shorter or longer, but they look more defined, more fit, more trim than me. But that whatever that's their journey i'm on mine exactly exactly yeah. i got i got one more question for you i like to ask every one of my guests throughout the year a uh, one question and uh last year it was a fun one where i i asked uh, what was the one thing that people don't know about you simply because they haven't asked and i got some fun stories about that this year the question is what was your first job wendy's wendy's i was 16 yeah <laughs> I worked at Wendy's Fast Food. Yeah, working the grill, um, dishwasher, like. So I started out like the front register. Mm -hmm. Slowly worked my way up, and at, by the time I, I quit, I was doing everything: sandwiches, drive-through, grill. Well, not all at one time, but like <laughs> yeah. they were. Yeah. I, I think I was on like the Wendy's like had like this stupid like like leadership group. Mm -hmm. I remember it was called, but I got put on that, which basically you would just lead like a little motivational speech at the beginning of the shift. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got put on that, but 
<laughs> Wendy's is the, the short answer. So uh, a follow up to that, and this is just for fun. Like, do you do you get a, a fun little kick out of going to Wendy's now? I don't really go to Wendy's now. No. And it's not because I don't like the food, but also because I'm a vegetarian. It's I wasn't vegetarian when I worked there. Gotcha. But now it's like all I can really get there is fries. Um, but I do go to the Taco Bell that's right next to the Wendy's where I worked. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll, it, I'll look over there and it's they completely revamped it. It looks completely different. Mm -hmm. But I do think about those times, <laughs> those late night shifts. <laughs> <laughs> the sticky yet sometimes slippery floor. Oh my God, I hate yes. Not the floors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, Not I've those worked, floors. I worked too long in the food industry myself, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I mean, thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. And um, I guess this is an opportunity for you just to let everyone know where they can find you and where to follow you on social media. And if you have any sort of projects or anything like that coming up in the near future, feel free. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can find me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv, Magster, uh, YouTube, Mosul Magster, uh, TikTok as well. I think I'm like the real Maxster or something. I can't remember. Those are my main social medias, hmm. platforms. And um, I'm not really working on any crazy projects, just more phasmophobia content as they're releasing new updates, trying to put out all kinds of guides. If there's anything people want to learn about, it's my favorite thing to do. Make a video and fast. Most people can learn more about it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Max. Yo, thank you. That was fun chatting with you <laughs> that's what I, that's that's the only thing i can hope for <laughs> <laughs> thanks for making it to the end of this episode big thank you to you for watching or for listening or for checking out my website themediajack.ca there is where you can find other episodes other content that i create as well a link to the patreon where you can support my show all my work directly. Also, where you could submit ideas, suggestions, or maybe you want to ask a future guest a question. Patreon is where you can go for all of that and so much more. And also get a shout out just like Red Wolf Dawn, our executive producer for this month. Big thank you to you once again. And check out themediajack.ca. The merch is there. You can get a really comfortable shirt like this supporting the Media Jack or my partner, the Iron Bikini. Or maybe you just wanna get yourself a good mug, or a gym shirt, or something else that tickles your fancy, themediajack.ca. Take care.